shipyard is getting really busy because Greece is opening up on May the 14th, which is next week. So many boat owners and charter companies are here working pretty quickly to get the boats back out on the water. It hasn't really been this busy since we left the shipyard in uh, January. And uh, it's fun to see all the activity and everyone here. It feels, um, the energy feels actually very lively and not a little depressing like it was before. It's actually fun to be here again. We're back on the boat today trying to troubleshoot one of the issues that we had in our list of things to do before we go to Croatia. The thing that we're working on today is we've got a overheating water heater system. Typically when we troubleshoot something, I tend to jump in and start to take things apart and mm -hmm. look for the problem and then mm -hmm. try to fix it. Kay on the other end likes to do research online or in books to try and well, find the problem. The first thing I do is try to find the manual online. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't read manuals. So anyway, between the two of us, mm -hmm. uh, we work out problems pretty well. Yeah. And so this morning Kay's been working on her laptop looking for the manual to the hot water heater that we have and she's found it and she's reading the manual while I'm downstairs taking things apart and causing havoc. And uh, I think eventually we'll get the problem solved. But that's what we're working on today. So, well, today and probably many days. Uh, Kay's going to keep working on that. I'm going to show you what I've taken apart and what the system looks like. And uh, just to, to let you know, the heater is an isotemp basic. We discovered we had a hot water heater seven months ago when we last moved our boat to the shipyard and used the diesel engines to motor sail. During the transit, hot water was noticed in the bilge. The hot water heater wasn't listed in the sail documents when we bought the boat and wasn't seen during the survey since it was under the bed and behind a bulkhead. Here's a CAD drawing of our Arana and we'll zoom in on the port side aft portion of the boat. We're focusing on the engine compartment and the aft berth, which are separated by a bulkhead. In the berth is a bed, and under the bed, we discovered a water heater. The water heater has two ways of heating the water. The first heating method is to run the diesel engine and circulate the engine's hot coolant through the water tank. When taking the system apart, we found a crack in the engine hose. This could have been the cause of the leak. The second method for heating the fresh water is by heating the water electrically. Cold water enters the tank from our fresh water tank and the water is heated inside the tank. The hot water leaves the tank when a faucet is turned on. Before it is distributed, the hot water enters a mixing valve which mixes fresh cold water with the hot water. The temperature of the mixed water is controlled by a temperature knob on the mixing valve. If there's too much pressure built up inside the tank, a release valve is tripped and the hot water is drained into the bilge. This is what the entire system illustration looks like. Okay, we're in the port aft berth and typically there's a bed here and I had to take up this, I don't know, half the bed to get at this big uh, water tank. It's got power coming to it. It's got a fresh water heat out hose here. It's got an engine water hose here and another engine water hose here. And it's not labeled uh, in or out. So it's also got uh, another fresh water in line here with um, some sort of shut off ball valve. This we think is a temperature regulator and it could be that this part failed and uh, the little red indicator was up and I just pushed it down so it could be that it uh, had tripped and it needed to be reset and that's all the problem was there's also a dial missing from this panel and I don't know what went here the orange and black hoses run aft under this they run to um, the engine section of what's the bed and the uh, port side engine is just behind this bulkhead here. This valve and it looks like it's a pressure you can see it's seven bar with an indicator 
where we can increase the pressure or decrease the pressure. So that's good too. Okay, I've got I've got this very well taken apart now. We've had a bunch of water drain out. Um, we took all the fittings apart and we found that this little button on top of the sensor was tripped so I pushed it back down. We also found out that this hot, hot, this hot water high pressure hose coming from the diesel engine had a crack in it. So now we have to replace both of these hoses. Uh, this one's not cracked, it looks fine all the way through, but if we're going to replace one, we're going to replace both of them. We've decided to replace both the high pressure valve as well as the thermal mixing valve. So this takes hot water coming in and cold water coming in and makes a mix. And you have a temperature dial on top that increases or decreases the temperature of the water. So we figured out that the problem that we're having with the system is either this valve, this valve, or this switch. And we don't know what the problem is right now because we can't test the engines outside of the water. So we're gonna have to just replace all three. The only thing that we could find uh, for this seven bar valve is a six bar valve that is going to have two adapters to it. And in place of this mixing valve, we have Frankenstein. So it's got adapters and adapters, which is unfortunate, but that's where we are and that's the parts that we can find right now. So I think this might end up working better in the end. The last system was very rigid and this will have some flexible, pipe included in the system so there won't be any stressors put on the hose and I think part of the reason is because this piece of plastic hose was attached to this hot water um, through this mixing valve and the whole thing was very rigid and I think this was actually leaking or um, it was kinked at the end or something like that but I think there was a problem because I felt some dripping water in it at one time. This week we visited the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Center building. The building was built in 2017 and designed by the renowned architect Renzo Piano. We were actually here in December of 2019 when we came to Greece for our boat survey and totally fell in love with this building. It houses the National Library of Greece and the Greek National Opera. Not only is this a beautiful modern building, it has some pretty amazing public spaces and it's a sustainable design. The building itself is powered by solar panels. The pool out front actually serves as a cooling canal and the green roof is actually a huge public park. It slopes from the rooftop all the way down to street level. Many parts of the park include small garden areas planted with native Greek plants that include olive, lavender, rosemary, thyme. It smells wonderful. One part of the building, unfortunately, that we didn't get to visit was the lighthouse. The lighthouse is a glass viewing platform at the top of the building and you reach it through a glass elevator. You get some amazing views of Athens, Greece, as well as the Mediterranean Sea. We really encourage anyone who comes to Athens, Greece to visit this landmark public building.
Here's your next project boat. The biggest barnacles I've seen in the entire med are on the bottom of this boat. Thank you, Dino. Yeah, thank, you thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.